Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 15 by 30 inch black, blue, and white painting. Turned out fantastic. You're obviously excited to paint it. That's why you clicked on this link. You want to learn how to paint this video. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. Let's do it just like this. Hey, nice to see you again. You actually caught me putting on our liquid clear. You look fantastic today, by the way. I love what you've done with your hair. It's great. So we have our Bob Ross liquid clear. It looks a lot like this. We have our 15 inch by 30 inch canvas and we need to cover it, make it wet, right? This is the on wet part of our wet on wet technique. We have wet paint and we put it on a wet canvas, right? So we have to take all this clear. And I did a little bit so it wouldn't be too long. You didn't have to sit there for too long looking at my ugly head, right? Let's go like this, back and forth, back and forth. How you doing today? How was your day at work? Yeah, it was good. Excellent, excellent. Ready to blow off some steam. We'll get a cool painting done. This awesome little waterfall painting. Zooming in on every little detail you can possibly think of. Look, just like that. Got a wicked cool little canvas, nice and ready to go. Fantastic, right? So, what we need to do now is take a small little bit of our paper towel, fold it into a little square, and then wipe all the excess clear off of this canvas, right? And wipe it off, just like from one little swipe. You get all that stuff to come off. So wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. Gotta wipe it off. You don't want any of that excess on there. It'd be too much. Too much is bad. Bad dealings. Bang, just like that. Now we're gonna put on a little bit of our under color. Now what we did today, probably just go with these four colors. Our Prussian blue, a lizard and crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. They're fantastic. We've already got our canvas covered. We need to wash this brush off for sure. You have to wash off all that excess clear that's even in the brush, right? That's going to be too much for us. And then always dab it on a paper towel. Got to. Got to dab it on a paper towel. Otherwise, you risk taking any liquid clear or, uh, sorry, any odorless mineral spirits and putting it up here on the canvas. Ah, oh, it's going to be bad. And my thumb is just killing me today. I think I've been spending too much time typing or... <clears throat> too much time typing or too much time painting? One of the two. So, let's come in here. I'm just gonna go crazy blue with this guy, right? Just blue everywhere. Now, when we say a thin coat, right? Somebody I saw in one of the, the Facebook groups, they said, what does Bob Ross mean when he says a thin coat? Right, well, we're not taking a whole chunk and just leaving it like nice and chunky and thick on the canvas, right? We're putting our, our dollop onto our brush and then we're really pushing a lot of pressure, right? You can't really see it, but you gotta push hard. You gotta stretch it to its max. And that way the color will be very thin on there. Now we can't really tell that there's any blue on there to begin with, right? And that's the fun part. We get all the comments on TikTok and, and Facebook and, uh, and Instagram for all the reels and stuff, all the YouTube shorts. They go, oh, how did the canvas change color to that blue? I saw you just load white onto the brush and then all of a sudden you hit it and it goes blue. Well, gotta have this undercolor there, right? And depending on how much of the undercolor we have underneath, depends on how brightly it's gonna show. So if you have a ton of undercolor underneath there, it's gonna be super bright blue when you hit it with white. If you have a very little amount and you stretched it very thin, then you'll leave some areas darker, some areas brighter. Maybe you want a little bit of brightness over here. But, whoa. What a catch. What a catch that was. I literally caught it on my palette with no hands. That's luck right there. That thing was going flying towards the table and the carpet, right? So no matter what we do, we need to have a little bit of paint on every part of the canvas. So make sure you've gone across every single bit and you have all the canvas covered, whether it's a little thicker in the middle where you start and then you blend it out to the sides or whether it's thin everywhere, you wanna have a little cover. You wanna know why? Do you wanna know why? I'm not gonna tell you unless you say yes. Do you wanna know why? Okay, the reason is we're just gonna go over and paint with white paint basically. And if the white paint doesn't have any blue color to blend with, it's gonna be seriously white on your black canvas and it's never gonna go away. You never get it to blend out because there's nothing to blend with, right? That's why we have those under colors in there. So get them up underneath the, can the easel, back and forth, and now we're ready to go. Now we're gonna take one of the, the Bob Ross brushes that Bram sent us in that uh, unboxing video that I did. And we're gonna use this one. Thank you to Bram for the Bob Ross brush. I appreciate that. It's like fresh, oh God. It has, still had the plastic on it. So what we need to do is come in and load up into our white, right? And how are we gonna make a moon? How would you make a moon? Would you just try to do a circle? Would you only do half? I have a really cool technique on how to do it. So what you need is a little cake pan or a plastic cup or 
some sort of something. I have an eight inch by two inch cake pan. You can get these at like the Dollar General for like a dollar and uh, not even use them for cooking. Just use them for painting, right? What we're gonna do is put our eight inch by two inch cake pan somewhere in the center, about that high, right? And just hold it very lightly. We're not trying to push it in so hard, right? And with a very light amount of pressure, look at how chiseled that thing is, woo! Very light amount of pressure. We're gonna start, we're gonna come around the side. Just the same, pushing the same amount on our fan brush the entire way around. And that way you've got a cool little even line all the way around, right? You don't need to complete it all the way because we're gonna have a big old mountain with a waterfall that comes down here anyway. But just to show you, very simply and easily like that. Now I wanna have, actually, you know what? We might put our waterfall off on this side. We've been doing a lot of waterfalls from the, the left. Let's put the waterfall off on this side. In which case, I should probably put this back up here. If I don't, I'll be mad at myself for not doing it. You know what I mean? I'll be like that one part that I looked at that I didn't like. And it was because we didn't put the, the cake pan back up there. So let's throw this back up here, finish it around, and then we'll do our waterfall from the other side. Oh yeah, as long as you have that same line, that same thickness, I might have to cut in front of you guys just so I can see the thickness. This brand new brush really helps keep everything even all the way around, right? That's cool. That is gorgeous. Okay, you guys ready for the reveal? Hang on, one more time. One more time, here we go, here we go. Come around here, just like that. Ready, ready for this reveal? Bam, pop it away. Gorgeous little moon right there. Just fantastic, right? I was thinking too, you could have, oh, I was thinking about this really cool idea to do an eclipse, like a total eclipse, but take it and pull it outwards, like streaks of light shooting out. Oh my God. Now I have to do it. I've seen it, I have to do it. If it sells, it sells. If not, I'm taking it to the gallery. Did you guys hear about the gallery? I've got lots to talk about today. I don't want to talk about too much because I like to save all the news for the Friday night freestyle show and the Saturday sessions show in the morning, right? But yeah, we went to go have a, uh, a meeting with the gallery and we're going to do a painting there. It's going to be wicked. Now, I want to do, I like that tree. Do I do the, you guys tell me, should I do an eclipse and like pull the light away or do the moon, right? What do you, what would you guys rather see? You must make it an eclipse. Okay. Let's do that then. So instead of, so we'll have a, uh, a nice pure line on the inside. Let's go back and put up our cake pan, right? Custom cake with Josh cake pan. You can get these at like the Dollar General or wherever you buy cake supplies, right? You don't have to use it for cooking. We're gonna come in here and just line it up exactly right again. And that way we don't have any bits. There we go. Shouldn't have moved it in the first place, right? Right there, don't move. Don't move, it's gonna be really cool, okay. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna shoot out a little bit of light out of from everywhere, right? And we don't have any paint on the brush because we washed our brush off, so it all depends on our pressure about how much light comes out from behind these little things, right? What if we were just like a little aura, a little bit different, and we'll do a little bit less over here, maybe sometimes a little bit more, right? A little bit less, a little bit more, pulling it around. Oh, you guys. Can you just not even wait to see? I'm doing it just like a clock too. We're pulling it out just like a clock would, right? You don't do it all at the same angle on a drill. You do it like six o'clock, so, you know, 6.30, 6, 7, 8, 9, bop, 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 all the way around. And that way we'll keep our perspective right, right? So maybe my big old arm's gotta get out the way and we'll pull this out. And I've never done an eclipse like this before. So we'll see what it looks like, right? We'll see, if it gets bought, it gets bought. And like I said, if not, I might take it to, my, to the gallery when we do that show, which is going to be wicked. So we're going to be doing more uh, posts about the gallery and more info is going to be coming out. So keep your eyes peeled. And like I said, we'll see what this looks like. We might have ruined like a $70 canvas by doing this. We might have. Could have possibly ruined a $70 canvas by doing it. Or it could be the coolest thing you've ever seen with that super deep, dark inside, right? Now that we're that far up. Maybe let's throw like a little bit, oh yeah, a couple of little bits that are like, not, I don't want to have it have horns, you know what I mean? So let's not do it over there. Maybe we'll do it on this side, but just again, like straight out, right? Come down here, pull this guy. Are you guys just so ready? Are you just anxious to see what this looks like? Because I'm kind of anxious to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm kind of very anxious to see what this is going to look like when we pull it away. Are you ready? 
Are you ready? There's no fixing it once you go back. So like once you take it away, it's very hard to line up our line again. So let's go around. Maybe one time we'll go around it just to take away any brush marks. See if that helps. Like again, I've never done this before. So not like this kind of eclipse anyway. We did an eclipse with a black, you know, a black uh, gesso moon. That was kind of cool. Take this guy, we'll just pull him down again. Try to be like a clock. Don't try to pull it in the wrong direction. Okay, I think I'm ready. Are you guys ready? You ready to see it? Here we go. We're going to reveal three, two, one. Are, are you sure you guys are ready? Like, did we get any comments? No, I'm just kidding. Ready? Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, wow. Holy cow, about fell over it. How cool that looks. <laughs> Oh, take it out of the store. I think I got paint on my shirt. I was so excited. Somebody take it out of the store. It looks amazing. I don't even want to sell it. You can't have it. I'm a, I, 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 I got to do something. I got to take it out of the store. I got to do something. This is the coolest thing. Bam. Wow. Don't touch it. Woo. It's a blue Aurora. Oh, my. Bailey, come look at this. This is cool. Sorry. I, 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 get, I get just as excited when I do a neat one as everyone else, you know what I mean? Just as excited as everyone else. Trying not to touch on the inside, that's for sure. Look at this thing be. She goes, <laughs> that's pretty neat, right? All right, let's try not to mess it up now. Don't even touch it. I know. Stop touching it, stop. I know, they look so cool though. Stop touching it. They look so cool. There you go. A couple of little flicks out, that looks so neat. I really like that. This guy's got to be connected at least. Drag some of that bright, right? Grab that bright. Pull it out like that. Oh, so cool. Linda said, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Okay, leave, I'm leaving it. Leave, leave it. You're still touching I'm it. I'm sorry, I'm leaving. Okay, I'm leaving. Okay. Thank you, though. Thank you for reading the comments. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And we didn't even have to use barely any paint. We normally have to cake a lot of paint onto it when we're making a moon to okay. cover up all the black, but that's, that's really cool. That's it, that's the whole painting. That's okay, that's it. We'll spray some stars and we'll be done. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's see how these brand new uh, brushes at Bram sent us spray in stars. That would be kind of neat. And again, I don't like using just the pure liquid white because it makes it too liquidy. So let's add a little titanium white just to stiffen it up. And obviously, hey Bailey, I'm gonna need your help actually. Actually, never mind. I gotta step in front of the camera so I don't hit the moon real fast. Do you still need my help? Nope, we're good, baby. There we go. You sure? Yep. Right there. That way there's nothing inside the moon. Get a couple little flicks of stars. Pop. Pop. Just like that. Oh, so cool. Maybe down here. Just the littlest bit. Oh, you guys. I get so excited when they start looking really neat. Because that's the real joy. Like, that's the happiness of painting to me is when you try something for the first time and it actually works the way you want it to work. That's fun, right? That makes me want to come back and do more things, right? Okay, let's come back here. We're gonna mix up a little bit of our dark color and mix our blue, black, and crimson. We're gonna throw in our waterfall right over here off the side. Be really cool. Man, what about, it would, be, it would be it would be neat to do like a, almost like a waterfall from inside, put a, put a landscape inside the next one, you know what I mean? And then do a waterfall inside there and have it drip out onto something else. The, the, the ideas are just running like wildfire, guys. But no, let's stick with our original idea here. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, I, I saw a picture of that uh, on uh, Ancient Aliens I was watching the other day. I saw a picture of it in orange. And um, I was like, oh, that would be, that looks like just the reverse of what I try to do when I'm making a moon, maybe I could do that and show the people a really cool way to make us uh, make something neat like that. All right, let's take the tiniest bit of white, like two swipes on each side. We'll put it into this bit just so you guys can see it. You don't want it to be super bright. You actually want it to be dark, but just so the cameras can pick it up. Why don't we come in? I don't want to cover over too much of the eclipse, but you have to put a little bit of it away with our little bit of, ooh, this will be cool. Just a little bit, gotta pop up into it, just like that. Oh yeah. You have to push it back, right? Get rid of it. Because if you don't, then you have no depth in your mountains or your waterfall or whatever it is, right? And again, that's getting way too bright. It's mixing with all of that brightness and the, the light color behind it. And you pop up, and this is just gonna be the coolest painting ever, you guys. Really caking on a bit of our rocky, dark color. And that way, when we come across it with our knife, 
it's going to pick it up in different places, right? If it's a little thicker, you know, in one quarter inch over here than it is over here, it's going to pick it up in different places. So don't worry about it too much. Let's try to keep it dark. Come back and just maybe get some pure black because this is mixing too brightly. And again, I like to make them real jagged, just nuts, crazy bits, right? Coming up into it, kind of hiding that. Get our little floating mountain. Just lives way off here. We just pull this guy out. Very cool. You can turn anything you want into a cloud, into a mountain. It's all so much fun just to sit and play around, right? Very neat. Now we're going to take our one inch brush and just like this, going to come up into it. And trust me, even though you think I ruined the painting with my little bit of mountain in here, you have to have it. Otherwise, you it's, it's too far away. I like pushing stuff back in layers. So if you want to paint like me, that's what we got to do. It. Maybe one day we just do one just maybe right after this. I'll just do a painting with just an eclipse. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change it. I'll do a painting just of an eclipse right after this one on a twin on a 12 by 24 watch this if anybody would like to see me come back and do just a space painting with an eclipse and spray in some stars on a 12 by 24 and put that in the store with just some stars no mountains no trees no nothing tell me in the comments right now i want to see it tell me in the comments that if we can get this one done fast enough then we'll come back and do that one heck yeah all right then we'll do another eclipse on uh, on tiktok and uh, just have it be, you know, spacey stars. That's it. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. I like down here, all those little stars that I sprayed in, they're kind of getting hidden by the mountain. And you can see what liquid white will do when it's hit by a brush. It likes to streak like that. And it'll blend away very simply and easily as well. There we go. Cool little piece. Very neat. Now I'm going to wash off this dark off this brush because we don't need it anymore. All right, and then we actually have to lay down just a bit thicker because I didn't realize or didn't think anyway that we were going to be doing it off the right hand side. So I didn't prepare for that. Right? And what I want to do is add a little bit of blue where my waterfall is going to come. So when we go over it with white, it'll shine the blue, right? So say we had it up here and it just comes out like this and just little thing straight down. Then we can stop. That'll be where our first little bit of water comes from. Maybe it comes out a little further. Bam. Right, right out there. And if you make this a little bit hard, you know, really push it in with a lot of pressure. Look how much my bristles are bending. Really pushing it, trying to like lay that blue thick. And that way we can keep these two colors separate, right? They're gonna to try to mix in a little bit, but not too much. What happens if we came down here now, and then we hit a little pool, right? A little flat area. How far does yours come out? Totally up to you, right? Or maybe yours just goes straight down off the canvas. What do you wanna do? That's up to you. It's your world, like Bram likes to say. All right, now watch, we come to this side, straight down again. Get that little curve, bam, it falls over. And then you decide. I like to add a little bit more, make it a little bit wider than you're actually gonna use your waterfall for. In case you accidentally come out beyond the blue, it'll still blend, right? Remember, if we hit any area of this canvas that doesn't have any undercolor on it, and you hit it with white, it's gonna be white forever. Never blend it out. Now we'll save all these room for our chunky rocks and different things and scraggly bits. I got this whole idea planned. All right. Now we're going to come up here. We need to make a few little shadows with our white and our blue. Just like that. Now we're going to talk about the paint on the brush, right? The first P, how much paint we're putting on, right? So we need to mix up our white and our blues, and that's going to make a little bit of a shadowy color, like a deep blue shadow color. Then we're going to take some of that dark color. We're going to mix that in, and it kind of doles it down just a little bit, right? Now we'll wipe off our knife so we get a nice clean knife. I'll we'll grab up some of our white, and then let's see, get some of our blue as well. Come over here. Not too much, right? But just enough to change it. There we go. That. That's pretty right there. That's pretty. Okay? Now they're gonna look, this is gonna look so bright in comparison. It's almost as bright as the color that's up here. But it's not pure white, right? You don't have to use pure white all the time. And then we can decide what we want to do, where our little tree is gonna come out and sit, pop its way in front. Maybe it comes down from up here. And like a little bit of like blue and white color up there, right in the center of it. Or maybe it gets purchased, I don't know. We'll see. If it doesn't, it's going to the gallery with me, I'm telling you that. Okay, we're taking a small knife here, and we're gonna come over and grab up some of our shadowy blue color. And it's gonna stand out very bright, right? But these are not our highlights. This is a shadowy blue, and you wanna leave an area of darkness, right? We call it the dark separator. And I'm not even gonna waste my time asking you guys if you know who sings that song, Smooth Operator, because nobody knows how to spell it. So if you think you know how to spell it, I'm gonna give you guys one more chance for a shout out, okay? If you want a shout out, I'm gonna put my stuff down. 
type in the name, the correct spelling of the name of the person who sings Smooth Operator. All right, Casey knows it, Lance knows it, Miss T Gypsy knows it, Top Cat had a spelling error there, I think it's kicking themselves. Let's see, Megan Jones knows it. Nope, that's not it. Let's see. Uh, Unk knows it. <laughs> uh, let's see, Tempest knows it. Mighty Mike, I think that was. Sith something. They're going in. They're coming in too fast now. Everyone's cheating. Everyone's cheating. There we go. Beanie Trinity, uh, Miss Tony Two, OQT, uh, Helen Nettoway. We got love so many people. I can't even read it. They're literally coming in way too fast. So finally, you guys must have seen my reel where I spelled out how to, uh, how to say Sade. Because, I mean, the comments the very first time I did that, I asked that, had to have been the funniest comments I've ever seen. It was like S-H-A-W-T-A-Y, Sade. It was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. And I was just cracking up back there. Fantastic. Look at these little things. Different little shadows, right? That's all we're putting in. Nah, we don't have to do them on this back rock yet. Putting in a couple down here. Different places where we might have like little shelves come in. And it comes in and throws itself down that way. You don't have to just go the same, uh, that same way all the time. You have this little bit it comes down in there. Little things, right? Doesn't have to match. They don't have to be super bright. They're just shadows in the darkness. Darkness, right? Way back here. You don't have to even light up all the way. It really doesn't. And then you're just very lightly dragging. We're using such small amount on a black canvas that sometimes you don't even want that thick of, a, of an amount on there. And so you can scrape it and you can move it and just with the teeniest, tiniest amount, create all sorts of little different gouges in your mountain, different little rocks going on, all sorts of different things happen, right? Very cool. Now I'm take the same knife, we're gonna come into that lighter color and now we're really gonna come in and brighten up these little bits, right? We don't need a whole a lot right at the top because you wanna remain about half of it in the dark uh, light and half of it in the dark with those shadows and then not Try to get rid of all of the dark bits in there, right? We're trying to leave some. You gotta leave some. Right? Maybe this guy comes in like that. I made it slightly less bright by mixing it a few times, and then one swipe on that side makes it bright enough to pop out like that, right? Bring it down. Maybe we got little things over here. These are the coolest parts, right? It's, it's picking up on all of that thick paint. All that thick paint that we put down initially in different areas, wherever it goes over, and there just happens to be a little raised level that's gonna pick it up off the knife, right? And that way, you don't have to try to touch every single thing, or every bit, or every anything, right? And you start to pick up little things, look at that. Now that's cool, right? The more you pick up, you can, you can literally, I just picked up some white from over there, or some light color, it's not really white, but some light color from over there, I'm gonna drop it over on this side, come down at a different angle, look at that little gouge that it makes right there. Just fantastic, right? Smallest amount of our second P. What's the second P, guys? Because I forget all the time. Right? So you guys got to remind me. I'll come back and look at the comments. What's the second P? Let's see if we can give a shout out to anybody for the second P. Let's see. Yo, oh, yeah, let's see. I saw user something. Travel Nurse 920. Travel Nurse 920. Everybody go follow her. She's getting a follow from Paint with Josh. They just come in so fast, you guys. I'm so sorry. I try to, I try to touch one and then they zoom up. So if you don't get your follow, just remember the paint, uh, the three Ps. We always ask, we always give out shout outs and different things for different stuff around here. So you'll get another chance. Don't worry about it, right? Leave all those little shadowy areas. We just picked up a little bit, drug it down that side. All different angles, different things. And maybe the teeniest, tiniest amount of light picked up in a couple little areas over here. See how they're not all in the same spot? They're all straight sideways, well, it's the same angle, but they're in different places with little dark areas in between all those light areas. That's what you want. What do we call those? Little dark, what? What do we call them? That's this, all right, this is a, another chance for a shout out. What do we call these little dark areas that separate our light colors? We call them dark, what? What do we call them? Dark, almost Kay Jones. I'm gonna give you a follow because you were close. Dark separation, that's close Kai, but I'm gonna give you a follow anyway. It's not either of those. Oh, separator. Who said it? There it is. I see it. Dark separator. K. Jones. Maybe I met it. Or maybe I read it wrong. Gotta have that dark separator in there. Because if you don't have the dark separator like Sade, then uh, it's really going to be hard to keep track of what's light and what's dark, what's highlight, what's your shadows. Right? You really got to have some. 
and then just let it feed down in. Very cool. Okay, you ready to see the most awesomest waterfall you've ever seenest? The most awesomest waterfall you've ever seenest. It's hard to put S at the end of every word. It really is. It really is. All right, here we go. Ready? We know we have our blue. It's coming down like that. It's going to hit. It's going to come down again. And then we can decide whether or not there's a pool of water or what. What's going on? You know what we should actually do here? Almost forgot, just real quickly, before the waterfall comes in, let's take our two-inch brush, nice and dry, and in those same angles of how we came up, right? So on these guys, I can't go like this. It's going to smear all the paint up that way. But over here, where we came down in this direction, we're going up just slightly, just enough to soften it in different places. And I don't recommend the beginners go all the way up to the top. You don't have to. Yeah, you need a whole lot of that third P. We've talked about the first P. We've talked about the second P of paint with Josh being pressure, right? That first P being paint, second P being pressure. So what's that third P, guys? Because you need a lot of it to be able to do this. Anybody know the third P? I'll give you a shout out. Practice, hypnotic. I can't remember how you even say that. It's, it's typed so weird. Here goes Kelly. Oh, the Kelly's the next person I saw. And then it, when I can't scroll up. Oh no, Kelly, I'm trying to get to you. I already follow you anyway. What a waste of time. Okay, here we go. Sage Buckler. This is the next. No, they're just coming in too fast. I can't even. I can't even follow guys. They're coming in so fast. I can't even follow anybody. So, I, I hope they got your shout outs. If I follow you, or if I was able to, I can't spend too much time back behind the camera, right? So what I'm gonna do is take our two inch brush. <clears throat> we're gonna come in and we're gonna start to tap like this. And then look, I'm gonna tap like this and go this way. All right. First we're coming down this way. And we're going down this. See how the, I turn the brush back and forth? Cause I'm really only using, look at that. Only using one side of the brush. You got one corner that's blue, right? Not using all of it. You're not smashing up here with all two inches, right? Which sounds like a minimal amount until two inches is next to your face. And that's pretty big. If you ask me, I'm just kidding. We had that comment one time in a live video. It just made me laugh. And ever since then, I always try to at least, I hope that person still watches and they're like, oh, this is what he's talking about me when I said that. It was just funny. All right, guys, we tap down. We're, we're darkening those colors. Ooh, look at this. It could almost be like a, like a little, ooh, guys, it could be like a little uh, like Lord of the Rings style, like stairs action where Gollum could climb up to the top, something like that. Really cool. And again, yours is going to look totally different, right? How can we both possibly have it look exactly the same with exactly the right amount of pressure and exactly this and exactly that? And look how we tap it and just move that a little bit. Just create a little bit more land, except it's a little misty. You don't really know what's back there, but our eyeballs can sort of figure out, okay, this is a piece of the mountain as it's coming down, right? And what I'm going to do in here is take our bit, all that little fog, just mix it up, a little bit of pressure. And you can see by the amount, I mean, these bristles are very short. Check this out. <clears throat> it's a brand new brush and the one we're at now. So I've lost about, I don't know, about a quarter inch from off of this brush, just from beating the devil out of it and, and brushing them and having them come off and break and stuff, about a quarter inch off. So even though it's smaller, it may look like I'm putting less pressure, but we're actually putting a lot of pressure in there to drag it. If I really wanted it to come down, you know what I mean? You can really drag down a little, uh, just the smallest little bit of color. That's all you need. Take a little bit of our white from up here, work it down a little bit brighter, right? And then it'll just have more, a little bit of mystery back in here. And then we can throw some bit of fog off of our waterfall. All right, who's ready for the waterfall? You guys check in, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I've got to clean some brushes real fast. And then we're going to get into this waterfall. So you never know, you might have a friend or a brand new friend that you're about to make that lives in the same city who's also a Paint With Josh fan. And if you guys link up, man, that'd be cool. Paint together, watch my videos, man. Look over, we're having a Paint With Josh party. Yeah, we came over and, uh, and uh, yeah, I met Sally. She was, uh, she was on this uh, chat board and yeah, it was cool. And then we, we got together and we did a painting. And it was really fun and we're gonna do it again uh, next week. It's gonna be awesome. Right, right. All right, let's see. Paint with Josh show does not recommend you meet up from anybody you meet on the internet. <laughs> Disclaimer. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, guys. Okay, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sink? Which is, I'm coming back here to read some comments. Mm, Houston. Bram's here. Bram, check out the eclipse. It's wicked. We got Washington, Reno, Nevada. I'm in Las Vegas. Uh, Georgia, Ohio, South Africa, Denver. Bram said, hey, but it went away too fast. Denver again, Portland, New Hampshire. I think that was Austin, Ohio, Indiana, Tuna Melt, Kentucky, Florida, New Zealand, a spicy Italian. That's my favorite as well. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, 
Oh, man. Huntington Beach. We got Dallas, Norway, upstate New York, Mexico, Washington, Oklahoma City, Houston, Texas. Meatballs. I see a lot of meatball sub. That's a favorite for a lot of people. See, maybe you guys, maybe I'm opening up a restaurant and I'm, it's going to be a sub place and I'm trying to figure out what's the favorite sandwich, right? Then we can, we can be building my menu. I'm building my menu. It's uh, the, the, the restaurant's going to be called Eat with Josh, right? That's, that's going to be the restaurant. <laughs> I had an idea to do like different stuff, uh, like, you know, like fix stuff with Josh, put this together with Josh, fix the toilet with Josh. You know what I mean? Have all these little funny things just with Josh. I know about all the little things that I have to fix and stuff. I just thought it would be a cool idea. All right, let's come over here. We're going to take all that white. Look at this. Bram, I'm using your brand new brushes that you sent, and they're freaking wicked. Like, they just chisel down to the, to the bone. Just to the bone. Awesome. All right, so we're going to take our brush, and we can't just come straight down, right? And we put in our little, our kind of our track of where we're going to go. And all we have to do is use the lightest amount of pressure, right? Smallest amount of paint because we don't want to make it too bright right away. You can make it brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. All you got to do is keep adding paint, right? But once you get too much on there, you can't take it back off. It's there forever. So we're going to come over here just very lightly and kind of stick close to the edge. It's going to be a little, little actually, no, we're going to go the full edge. We're going to go out here to the side and then straight down, maybe one whole brush. And this is a Bob Ross uh, number six fan brush. Maybe one whole brush length, and if we go like this, and keeping that dark separation, you don't want to come up and touch your water to your mountains, right? I have that shadow back there. Come to the side, little minimal pressure, let it fall off like that, right? Very cool. Very flat up here. You don't have to have a lot. Now, here you can change it, but look at how much color that turned to that blue. You see the difference in the blue to the white side, right? Blue side, white side, right? Super bright, even though the light makes it even more bright than it is. And you decide then what you want your waterfall to look like. You have to leave some space to put in one more little piece of rock over here. So we can cover up, just like this basically, covers up a piece of where our waterfall comes out of, right? And then you can see where it's falling. Now we still have that whole backside clean, fresh paint on there, right? So what we can do is again, start from the same, the tip up here, a little bit to the, I like to start and I get a little rotation. So we'll come over to the side, down, just let it fall. Right? However long you want to let it fall, totally up to you. And then you can decide if you want it a little brighter, you can wash your brush and then add a little bit more paint. That number one P, paint with Josh. Right? I just said the number one P. I'll hide the answers. Paint, right? What's the number two P? Do you guys know the second P of paint with Josh? The second P. And I can't believe that it, all, out of all the instructors in all the world, no one has come up with the three Ps. Like, it's so just... Mind boggling. Okay, got two more fresh sides of paint because I lost a lot of it up here in the transfer. We're gonna go, just that extra little bit of brightness up there, that tumultuous water. Now I'm gonna start a little lower, a little less pressure, and you drag down little teeny bits. Holy cow, guacamole. That's what I'm saying. Smallest little things. Bam, the more you go over it, the more you're gonna ruin the little cool little bits, right? Now we're gonna come down again. We decide where we are, where our little pool was. And we can add our next little piece of water that's coming down, right? That almost looks like a, ref a reflection, which would be cool, but I would have to reflect the whole mountain underneath, which I'm not, yeah. nah. And we'd have to, or we could do like the, dude, I could almost still do that. I could almost still reflect the, um, the thing, but then again, we would have to reflect the mountain. I don't wanna reflect the mountain. So I'm gonna take the brush. Again, we've already mixed over, so let's come over here just to line up where we want it to be, how far you want it to come out before it falls again, right? And then you can go back and add your little highlights and stuff. So soft. Same angle, very light amount of pressure. Don't worry about what's happening off back here. We're going to cover it with rocks and stuff and mist and, and you know, stuff. Bunch of stuff. We're going to come over here, just kind of tap up. We'll make our little bit of splashiness, right? I would imagine if that much water was falling down, even if a lot of it, if, even if we were in space, you would still have some splashiness when it came down and hit the, the thing down here, right? I don't want to ruin too much of my little splashies, and we don't want to go too high up where it's very white. You want it to go from very white to very dark, right? Even though it's still very bright against this dark, right? But it's still from its brightest to its least bright, and then you hit it with your next little layer or your next piece of brightness. Something like that. All right. 
Yeah, these Bob Ross brushes are so cool. Thanks, Bram. We gotta do another, uh, we gotta do another paint thing soon. Maybe we do three waterfalls, guys. Should we do three? We could do three. We could so do three. We could so do three. We're doing three. We need to add more blue though, right? Because if we don't have any blue underneath, then it's not gonna do anything. Let me come over here, there we go. Come off that side. Maybe a little guy, just a little guy. And then we maybe we could still save some bit of kind of bluey color underneath. If not, it'll be a mist or, or fog or something, but we can have another little waterfall drop off like that, just falling down the edge, just like a slinky. He's a slinky, it's everyone's favorite. Damn, very cool. And it's all about what you guys see, right? We're gonna come down to like a different angle down here, get on my knees to see this guy set up these colors. Because again, if you don't have the color underneath bright enough, it won't show that brightly. It'll just be mainly white. You won't pick up any of the blue underneath, right? And then we're saving all of these deep, dark areas all around the edges of those bright areas and it contrasts and pops so well. Just excellent. Just excellent. Excellente. So, Bailey's like, she's been trying to learn Spanish for a long time, so. And I barely know any Spanish. I, 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 know, I, I can understand. Uh, I don't know the word. I don't you know all the words and stuff. But I can understand a, a fair amount. So her Spanish speaking has popped through into my video. Excelente. So I hear her do it all the time. Okay. <clears throat> what we need to do is take our brush and very lightly. I don't want to go too far this way because we're going to have this big dark mountain in here. But we need to have a little bit of mist. So just with the smallest amount of pressure. Watch this thing start to change. I'm going to try to... Do it a couple times and stay out of the way. Yeah, it's instantly getting very dark towards the tip, right? Out there. Bam, bam, bam. It's getting darker and darker and darker as it fades off into nothing. Very light, so we stay very bright here. Very, just, I barely even touched it. Just enough for the bristles to flick them, to flick that bit of paint and move it a little bit. Now over here, watch, more pressure. Keeping this little dark line between our foam, our, uh, our water, and our bit of fog. Right now, watch, we need a little bit more paint. Just a little more. As we come out here, keeping it, and now look, that's very close, right? That's very close to that color. Not even as thick as the brush. And that's gonna try to grow when we touch it with our paint. So if you get very close, you gotta be careful. I don't come out here. We'll have a little bit of misty, shadowy bit of our, our uh, uh, cloud come in from this side as well and connect. You don't know whether it's the cloud coming into the, the waterfall or whether it's the waterfall mist leaving the, the scene, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to try to come in here sort of upside down so I don't touch the paint underneath. Uh, perfect. Right there. Right. Left that little dark line back underneath there. It starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes away. And we'll take our phone, our fog. I keep calling it foam like I'm painting a seascape. I don't know why. Just like that, trying to stay away from the waterfall though. You don't want to touch it. You want to have that darkness, right? Now it looks like there's a flat edge of rock back there, which is very cool. So what if we did this? If it was like a flat spot where Gollum could like hang out. What if we did this back here, right? Where it was like a little bit that just kind of fell off. And then we can drop in some more of that foggy mist and stuff underneath it. But that's going to have our... If anything, it's gonna put your dark separator back. Almost like you could walk around. Oh, guys, we could totally pick. Why do I always come up with the best ideas? We could totally pick up a little pathway where he, they go underneath the waterfall and they pop out around the other side. Bonk, idea, light bulb, light bulb. And now these little things are gonna be steps. Oh, this is gonna be so sweet, just so sweet. And a little bit, going over it, the smallest little bit, having it come down behind our mist, and then with a little bit more pressure, I can blend the darkness away to where you have this little thing, it's going back around there, and then we lose sight of it, then maybe we pick sight of it up over here. Maybe we have one piece, yes! The reason they have to go behind the waterfall, right? Why do they have to go behind the waterfall? Why can't they just go around it? Well, because you got one piece coming out here with all these little bits, different little rock wall coming out this side. And then there's no other way to do it besides going around and coming down over here, right? Then maybe there's a pool. Maybe they came around from the edge of this darkness over there. It's gonna be neat. Whatever it is, it's gonna be so cool. It's 
<laughs> That'd be so cool. There, we're gonna take this very lightly, just pulling it to the side, letting it blend off, right, with our pressure. All this dark paint wants to go cover over all that mist. And I don't really wanna have to go back and put it on again. So, very lightly pulling into it, just softening the dark paint, but not pulling it so much that it stretches all the way across the light paint, right? Now we're pushing a little bit harder. Pushing it down, look at that. It's very shadowy down here, but you can get some areas that light up, right? It could be a bit of a runoff of water. It could be a bit of light bouncing off of something. It could be whatever it could be. Maybe the, some of this water puddles up and it comes down and trickles down over the edge. You have to tell yourself stories, right? That way when, when someone asks, then you're ready with the answer. Well, yeah, it's obviously, you would have a, you know, you could be splashing out, it'd be up on top of the little ledge thing and it would trickle down here and it would fall down, right? Bam, just like that. Come up with a story in your head. And that way you'll be ready. Very light pressure with the clouds. And we almost lost a bit over here. It's not as bright as I want it to be, which means we need a little bit more paint on the brush, right? A little bit more. Ooh, that's going to be too bright now. Now we're really going to have to work that pressure and decide if I try to go up. Oh, man. All right, watch. Let's pick a little bit of that up. Look at that. It was like a chunky little bit. I'm going to wipe that off because I don't want that up there. It's too much. Come over here. Scrape it like we're trying to get a brush bristle off, right? Dab it on a paper towel. Don't have to knock it, beat the dab out of it, just dab it on a paper towel. It's not on the brush anymore, right? Then we're gonna come in, light pressure at first to see where it's gonna go. And then, okay, maybe I can use a little bit more. Maybe I can push a little bit harder, right? If we would've had all that paint up there and we would've tried to just do it, that's when you start running into those problems where everything gets too light colored or you lose all your dark area, right? You don't save any darkness at the edge. That darkness is your best friend, right? It's an eclipse we can't even see. I'm surprised we can see this much at night. So that darkness is our best friend area. You have to save them. Don't push so hard that you kind of cover over all of those things, right? That's the business. And I'm gonna add some of that light color around the edge over here too, just for the buyer to see, all right? That way we might have some on this side as well too, but we'll have to do that later. That's cool. All right, now let's highlight these little stairs just a little bit. I didn't want this one to go crazy long or be a crazy amount of detail since we've already done it. But uh, yeah, it's gonna tend to be that way. That's Paint with Josh paintings. Okay, we're gonna come in a little bit of light back there. Now we have a difference. We have that dark separation between the two bright colors and a teeny tiny dark separation between the cloud and our bit of brightness right there. Now watch, I'm gonna drop down. You don't have to connect every single thing. <clears throat> That's almost too much paint though. Don't want to connect every single piece to every single piece. You got to have those dark separation in there. We'll pull down a little, little bit, a little bit. Just mix it. Doesn't even have to be the same amount of brightness, right? Maybe we come back in with a little bit of that light blue color or same little bit of light blue. One little piece over here. Maybe it turns and it went back that way. There are little steps. Oh, guys, right? Maybe, maybe. It doesn't have to be the brightest thing. Remember that. Painting at night, out here in the deep dark canyon under the full moon of an eclipse. Like we can't, not gonna be able to see it to a whole 10 ton of a lot, right? I'm gonna come back underneath here. All these are, are just our little steps. They don't have to be perfect. They look like columns almost, like you have to jump from each one like Mario. It's kind of neat, pulling down the slightest little bit just to drag some of the light color down, it's teeniest, tiniest little bit, right? Still leaving the dark separator in between. This guy that's in the front, pull him down a little bit further so more lights up. Maybe we need a little teeniest little bit more paint on our brush. Straight down, yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Anytime you think your step is too big, you can take a bit of your, either your blue or your, your straight black, put that in there just to hide that shadow. It flattens that little step out, right? You're never gonna see this step at an angle like this. Otherwise we'd fall off, we wouldn't be able to walk up it. So, Want to see little things and they have to remain flat and if they don't remain flat and come back in and straighten them up and do different things we're only going to see the tip top of it the flat section not the top of it it may be like a little octagon maybe it's a hexagon out there right but we're only looking at it from this angle so we're just going to see the teeniest little bit of it not the whole thing that's what i see a lot of people that do an awesome mountain they do an awesome waterfall and then they get to some bit in the front of the of the painting and they're painting like they're looking down at it like this and you're like, what happened? You, it was perfect, 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 perfect. And then all of a sudden now we're, we're like this because you either want to see the whole thing or maybe they didn't want to cover a bit of the mount or whatever. You know what I mean? All sorts of things can lead up to that moment. But uh, yeah, this one's just 
Excellent, I love it. Right there. Come over with a one inch brush, just very lightly softening it. Don't wanna take away too many details. Dude, we could even have it roll out right here in front of us, you guys. I mean, <sighs> that is so cool. We could make it look, right? I, I love the lip though, right here. That little lip, that little action forces it sideways. So if I take this and I blend it all out, right? Then it becomes mist or fog or whatever. Then we can put our little, uh, our, our rocks can come in behind it. We're gonna have a little thing there. Yeah, we have to have, oh man, guys, what do you think in the comments? Should we do that little waterfall and make it come out the front as well? No. Someone is interested in buying it? So you guys can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And if you go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, I don't even have a working computer or a device in here to, uh, to see it. I'm shooting from both the devices because we're filming a tutorial. So you'll be able to rewatch this whole video zoomed in on all the details and see all the cool stuff over on my YouTube page uh, next Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday today. The video is always come. No, it's Thursday today. It's Thursday today. The new video came out yesterday. The videos always come out on Wednesday over on my YouTube page. And uh, it's a free tutorial, zooming in. It's never just one thing from way back there. Every time I come up to touch the brush, it comes in. So you can see the teeniest, tiniest little details that we're doing. I like to show you everything. I never want you to feel like I'm hiding something or that I did something differently. And that's why mine looks like it does. And that's why yours looks like it does. You know what I mean? Never, never hide anything from you. I'll always tell you everything that I can possibly remember and know just to help you guys not struggle like I had to, right? There we go, very cool, very cool. All right, now, let's take our little piece of rock. We need to mix up a little blue, a little crimson, a little black. I'm just doing this whole painting with just this one fan brush that Bram sent, besides the palette knife and the one, in, uh, the one inch brush. We haven't even used a two inch brush. So we're gonna come in here. Remember, we have to cover over a bit, some bit of that where the water's coming out of. You're not gonna, you can't see it. And this is that, watch, I'm gonna show you exactly what happens. So people will come in and do it. They go like this. I go, okay, my rock is right there, right? I mean, on this one, maybe, right? But if you had too much water, you wouldn't be able to do that. You have to come up and cover over it. Push it back behind there. Now, at least it's coming out of a little gouge in these two bits of rock, right? As we pull our brush down, we decide what we want it to look like, leaving a little gap in between a very deep, dark separator back in there, even between the shadowy areas, right? And let's say maybe we had our little bit come down here and then we'll highlight it. We'll see what it looks like and see if we can add a little trail coming out this side. And that'll be really neat. So back to buying the painting. If you want to buy these paintings, you can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And then once you're over in my store, use the search bar, type in 758. That's this painting right here, number 758 on the career. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to get rid of this. Just gonna have to do it. It looks so cool. I keep wanting to like add another one over here and try to look like it's coming out of all ways, which you can do just based on your angles, like a clock, right? We show you easily how to do it, but maybe another day. And this guy, just gotta have that, look at that, the little dark separator underneath, right? And it's getting very dark way up underneath this little bit. It's flowing, I can just see it. I was telling Bram earlier about painting seascapes and stuff. He sent me a photo. He's like, oh, I might try to do this seascape. It's like a local place where he's at. And uh, I was like, oh, that's really cool. But where's the big crasher? I need the big crashing wave. You know what I mean? It's just like little small waves coming in. And those are, they're, they're, they're fun for beginners, but they're boring for me to do. So I love doing a big crashing wave, no matter where it is. Be on the, it could be on a, on, a, on a planet, way out in the middle of the solar system. And, uh, you know, and I know you guys want to see it, but my brain gets to it and it goes, this doesn't have enough detail. There's not enough motion. And when I'm doing waves, I like to, just like the waterfall, I like to see it come to life. And then I pretend it's alive and it's flowing down. So, all right, let's take our guy. We're gonna go back there, same shadows, not even gonna change them. These blue shadows in here, these are dark shadows in the back. So we're gonna save about half of this dark rock that we created, right? Don't need the whole thing to be lit. A couple little bits. And now we're only gonna light up half of a half. We're gonna leave the very back uh, bit dark. So you really don't need a whole lot of paint because then when we go to highlight, we're only gonna cover about a half of a half of that side, right? <clears throat> so it's really, if you think about it, it's half original black canvas slash mountain color, one quarter shadows, one quarter highlights. That's what you gotta try to cover. Maybe this, oh, maybe this guy's like a, a cliff off the back back here, right? Just with a little light pressure, pulling it down, and then you get all these neat little things start happening. What do we wanna see? What do we wanna see, right? Come around, maybe we wrap it, we pull it around this way. 
light pressure, little things. You want to see a bit, a little bit brighter, you add a little bit more of that paint. Change it up, right? You want to have a little bit darker area, add a little bit of that deep darkness, add in your deeper shadows, right? You decide what it looks like. The more thick paint that's on here, right? Because again, we're not using a lot. We're using a very, very, very small amount. Compared to a white canvas, we're using a very small amount. The, uh, that thick paint's going to grab up on these highlights and our shadows. It's going to pick up in different places and allow it to blend. It's very cool, right? Very lightly. Just kind of pull down whichever directions you were sort of pulling with your brush. Just softening it enough. Just enough. Just kind of puts it out of focus the littlest bit. Now, let's say we had... Yeah, we're going to have to do it with this color, right? So say... I just dropped my knife, too. Just throw things everywhere, John. Just throw it everywhere, right? So again, guys, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can purchase this. You go over there. It's number 758. And if you pull it up in the store, it's 40% off with free worldwide shipping. So head over there. Check it out now. And uh, make it yours before somebody else gets it. Because sometimes they go fast. I'm telling you. They tend to go quickly. All right. Maybe we had a couple little bits. Just have to drop down over here. Kind of covering. So we'll go out. Make our little... Little square things, a couple little things, little little action. Start to pull our little bits of rock down that are hiding in here. Maybe there's a jagged piece again coming up. And this is where you make a decision, right? Right here, I always say you got to cover over some of that, but that looks so cool with that dark line in there, right? So sometimes you're like, do I listen to Josh or do I just do it, you know, and just leave it like that? And even though I said that was my favorite part, what do I also say? Sometimes you got to cover up your favorite part, at least a little bit. So we're going to come up just so we hide a piece of it there. Just the littlest piece. I like these guys being just all jaggedy and crazy. And watch, I came down to leave that piece of water back there so you can see where it comes down and hits. Now we're going to pop up. Ooh, that's it right there because we got to have our little piece right here. But now we have a couple jagged rocks out on our path. And now I can see our path coming down here. Maybe we hit this spot and then... Who knows? Maybe we go the other direction, right? We start coming down this way, and then we just pull off some cliffs right here, guys, like this. Woo, Nelly! Just like that. And then we can just keep going with this whole thing. Maybe we'll pop our another little bit out, our, our little road off down here. My goodness. Well, I, I must. I, I'm glad I listed it at the price I listed it at versus uh, cheaper, because this one's turned into one of my absolute, absolute favorites. Just absolutely staggering how much I love this one. Oh, man. You know what we need to do, though? Just to provide a little bit more depth. You can't leave it super dark back here, right, Josh? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? you got to add a little bit of either, right? Let's go like this first. Take our little bit of uh, color off the back side of our bit where it comes down. And this is where you got to really work on your perspective. Maybe up here. Just by pulling it down. It gotta be a little square though. There we go. Little different angles, right? And then we can take and add little highlights and have our cool little bit of walkway happen up there. All right, so if we're gonna do that, we're gonna highlight the back of this rock. Now that we have a little bit of that color, all right, again, this is our, it's a nighttime scene. Watch, I'm gonna come down through my path because I know where it needs to be. I'm gonna cover back over it, right? There we go, coming down through it, very soft. You don't want to push so hard that you make these stripes go away. The stripes are the gouges, the sides, the spires of rock. That's what you want to have. I want to get rid of those guys. Those guys are the biz. That's not what I want to do. Now, look, I've tried to pull that guy out to the side. Watch, we're going to take him, pull him straight back down. And that bit of darkness becomes a stripe of uh, the shadow. You know what I mean? All the pens. Take this guy over here, pulling that bit of darkness down, and then we can go highlight him. Maybe it goes all the way off the canvas. Very cool. Now let's come back. Get our bit of white. Let's pop in just a little bit right into our big old pile of paint. Nothing too much though, right? I'm down in here where we've already been pulling it out, not into the, not plunging it into the paint. Maybe we get a little bit brighter right on top. Oh, goodness gracious. Right on the top, just like that. My heck. Woo! That is just... I just love it. I just love it. So great. Okay, now, there we go. I want mine to flow heavy down there. There we go. It's getting very light down at the bottom, so we come down, we hit down here at our pool. 
just pop in little little things, right? It doesn't matter what it is. We're not really looking down there. We're going to take it and turn it into a soft cloud anyway. With the smallest amount of our what, guys? It's time for a shout out. It's been a minute since we've done a shout out, so let me know. What am I talking about? Our slightest amount of what? Look at that. That is cool. Already. Let's see. Pressure from Hypnotic Beauty, I think it was. Arts and Crafts Plus. Chrissy says pressure. Arts and Plus. Everybody's pressure, pressure. You guys are awesome. Jade says uh, this is a masterpiece. Jade. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jade. All right. Let's see. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. I appreciate that as well. And you know what the best part is? We're actually filming a tutorial that we can all go and rewatch over on YouTube and the, and the live doesn't disappear forever. So that's what's cool. And I was happy that it turned out like this today. Let's take this other guy and let's decide. Maybe we go over here. I gotta like, again, I gotta decide. I'm sitting here like this. Decide like whether to, to do the limbo and paint. Let's, oh, I'm gonna pull a muscle. Oh my God, it's like shooting paint up my side. Oh, that hurts. Or come down here on my, uh, on my knees, right? Get down here and propose to this painting. Oh, you're so beautiful. I promise to hang you on my wall and treasure you till death or a sale do us part. Damn, wicked. Just absolutely wicked. Man, okay, now let's add in. We've got our little bit of water coming out. So we're gonna come down here over like this. I wish I could get my computer to fire up. And because uh, I'm, I'm streaming it from both the devices, so I'm gonna have to finish the painting to then go see if it's sold or not, which kind of bums me out, but it's all good. There we go, a little bit out. That's what I want, a little bit further, make it a little bit look more, a little, look a little bit more rounded where it was coming out up here. Beauty, all right, now. Take our bit of paint, we're gonna come back wherever we hit down here, we decide maybe we have our another bit of, little bit of water. And this is where you can go, okay, do you wanna have, do you wanna have a bright blue pool of water at the bottom? Do you wanna have another water fall? Does the water fall off this direction? Does it fall off that direction? What's going on? Or does it just come down into this kind of bright, kind of deep, dark pool that's happening down here, right? You get to decide, that's the most fun part. So maybe we come into there. A bit like that over here. We'll leave our little areas of darkness, little areas of light. Again, we're gonna come back and pop through with that bit of thing right in front of it. But you gotta have enough paint up there that when you go to, to stretch it down, it doesn't go away. Remember, everything can't be so dark that we can't see it. Gotta be able to see the dang thing. There we go. And that's our back wall. And then we'll come down our little pathway right here, a couple little stairs. And then we'll take our stairs and we'll almost fall off the edge because Frodo's not paying attention. He's going to fall off the edge over here. And Smeagol will grab him and then we'll turn back this way. Oh, and then maybe we can, just, we can just keep coming, guys. We can just keep coming. We're, like we could walk into this scene. Oh, wicked, wicked, wicked. Make these guys dark first. All right, and then we'll come back over them with a little bit of brightness. Now up here, almost just kiss the waterfall right on the edge. This guy, we're going to pull it. The waterfall likes kisses. They like kisses, I'm telling you. So kiss the waterfall right on the side. Dude, we can even bring it down to, oh, we're so going to. Why, why do I even say, dude, we could. I'm going to do it. It's going to be awesome. We're going to come over here. I have to, we're getting down so far now that the glare and the angle is what's going to be all funky. Maybe there's some stairs here. We pop down a little stair. We pop down over here. And now we're back to here to hide where our water comes out. So clearly we're going off the other direction. Poke out a little bit of brightness right there. Now we can take our bit of color here. I forgot that I'm still doing a tutorial and uh, gotta hold the brush up here so the other camera can see it, right? Not down here. Can't see the other camera cuts off like right at the bottom. So we've got our, our white right on the edge. And then we gotta decide, maybe this guy comes out more towards us. Remember how we were gonna do it back here? So we'll go off to the side first. Very light amount, might even have too much. So wipe the tip off, uh, tip of the brush off, come out here, fall off the side, just a little bit, right? Over here, a little bit. Now we're gonna change, I'm almost gonna use less of the brush, tilting it on the side like this. Now we're gonna start coming out, and we're gonna come down. Now I'm gonna use more of the brush. All right, now we're done flicking from, or we're done making our little C shape. I'm gonna start to rotate back around the other side. 
right? Because it's got to come out to a little point. And you got to have it look rounded on the edge like that, right? So all about using it like a clock, you guys. I always say that. I'm like, do it like a clock. Turn it around. Pull it down. Over to the side. All about your angles. How it's rotating over. Where the bright areas are. Where our, our dark areas are. Very cool, right? And all you got to do is make it soft enough. And this whole thing, you see me a change? I didn't just pull straight down over here. We're pulling with that little bit of rounded flick to it and have it come down however far you want it to go. Very cool. Now we have to have a little bit of brightness back in there, right where it goes, right? So we'll get a bit of white right on the end of the brush. Come back here, start sliding it back. Little different things, but pretty straight, right? Just like that, a little bit of light, a little bit of dark in there. And then maybe we can add our little pieces of brightness. Try not to make everything look exactly the same. That's all, right? That's all we want to do is make everything not look exactly the same. So very cool little thing right there. I think we can even have it hit again and go off again, you guys. Like we could do all sorts of stuff. All sorts, very lightly. Same angles, same pressure. Kind of rotate those flicks. On this side, we're almost going the other rotation, right? Like that, like we're really overdoing it now by doing it like that, right? That's our bit of rock anyway that's going to come in and hide all this stuff. But yeah, it's very neat, very neat. So remember, you want your rocks to be dark. So if you go over a section of white, add more paint. And out here in space or wherever we are, I love doing these little flicks off the edge, especially if you're coming into a bright area. A little like just sharp bits like a like a choker necklace you know what i mean like just sharp very cool all right now we had our bit where what happened to our road i can't even see the angle anymore it came down that was our bit of there all right then we'll pull it off oh, shoot, we can go this way too we can do all we can do whatever we want to do all depends on our highlights right so let's call it fill this in with black maybe down to there and then we'll decide do we want to do we want to continue moving forward or do you want to have something come in from this side to fill up this space? Or do you like that far off bit of, of stuff over here? Since we're going to have foreground here, you don't have to have foreground on both sides, right? We have our foreground here. Our path has come down. It's turned. It's hit. It's turned again. Then we can come down here. We can hit. And we're here in the front. Or you hit this side and you go off that way. You know what I mean, like you walk into it from the corner. All depends on our highlights and shadows and this, that, and the other. We want to leave those deep, dark areas. And now we have to... We have to highlight some of this stuff because it just looks like a blob of darkness, right? But that's what you gotta have. You gotta have a blob of darkness that you can keep those dark areas in. If everything's too bright, it's not gonna make any sense to our brains. It's really not. Now, with our fan brush and that same little blue paint on it, not trying to get too close to our waterfall because I don't want it to look like water. I want it to look like our bit of uh, rocky wall back there. And then we'll highlight this stuff. We gotta do that right out here on the side. Little bits, maybe they come down further as they come down this way. And then of course, we'll have our another little piece of pathway, right? Obviously we can't do that on both sides. And this is again, what I'm talking about when you're doing, uh, when you're trying to, to paint something you're, and you think you're looking at it from above, and you're trying to paint both sides of it or paint the top of it or paint every single piece of it. You don't have to, you don't have to paint it all. You're never gonna see every single bit, right? That's the best part about painting is we don't have to, and especially on a black canvas, you have to do even less. And that's why I love black canvases. I'm a lazy painter. I don't want to do, you know, if, if I can figure out a way to do something easier and show you guys how to do something easier, don't you think that's what I'm going to do? That's what I'm going to do. Let's see. I'm over here. Dang, just like that, right? Get those light areas, those dark areas, because it's going to happen no matter what the lighting situation is. It's going to be slightly darker, slightly brighter in anything, right? Very cool. Now, let's try to use the palette knife, a little bit of our light blue color, our little brightness that we made. And again, we're going to try to keep a disconnect in here. And it doesn't have to be so bright back there. So I'm just trying to use just a tip corner of the knife. There we go. Now we got our little bit of, of brightness, a little lip, almost looks like water coming out, right? And you want to leave our smallest little dark separator in there. You have to do it. If you lose it, you're going to miss it. I say it all the time. Maybe we do a couple little taps as we come down, a couple little stairs leading down, right? Those look kind of neat, if you ask me. 
Drag off just the corner, not the whole stair, just the corner as it comes down. And then just a little bit with the end of the knife. And then you get to decide where you wanna do it. I'm so excited for this, uh, for our, um, our gallery, I can't even say it, I'm so excited. So excited for the gallery that we're gonna paint at. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, it's gonna be on Saturday, June 13th. If you haven't seen it already, go over and check out my Facebook. We put out the, the video. It was kind of sneaky what I did. I, I made it seem like they had turned me down in the text, in the caption, because I wanted you to watch the video. And it worked on Bram. He texted me, he's like, man, don't worry about that, that gallery, dude. You don't need them no ways, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Bram, did you watch the video or did you just read the caption? He goes, well, I just, I just read it. <laughs> I was like, well, watch the video. He goes, oh, he's like, you got me. You know what I mean? I was like, that's my point. That's what I was trying to do. Get people to watch the video instead of just read the caption. Most people don't read anyway. Let's see, come over here. Now, on this side, just lightly. Right? We don't wanna have too much bright area. Maybe we don't even connect them all the way. And this is a bit bright for me. Maybe it came up like, oh, look at that. Just, just by swiping it up a little bit and then coming away. You leave these cool little bits that are trying to poke out just like our dark ones are down here. Our little head. Let's start coming up with a name for this painting, guys. I can't wait to uh, to see what you guys think for names on this one. Like Choker Necklace Cliff Pathway, whatever. <laughs> whatever whatever titles we're going to come up with for this one, it's going to be awesome. So you guys get the title of this painting. Or uh, if the, you know, some of the times the buyer buys it. But in this instance, I can't, I don't know if that's happened. I'm using both of my devices, so I can't tell what's if it's been purchased if it's not been um and my computer in my in my little room here is giving up the ghost it just doesn't want to work anymore so i will just have to finish the tutorial and then i'll look and see on the shop and and uh, see if it left us right I'm trying to connect these little bits of light over here not like they're a piece of the stair but just like they're a piece of some rock back there very cool all right maybe down in here again pulling straight down and then we'll have to add, see how there's too much color right in there? There's too much color for me. You gotta have your dark separator back in here. So between that bit of color, a little bit of darkness, and it's like a little shadow, a step down, something, let it mix in if you have to with our bit of uh, thing. And then you can't really tell what happens, right? You got your shadow, and then you get to decide what gets lit in your mind, right? Maybe we'll do another one of these little spiky slide off things. Those are very cool, very cool. And then based on our, the amount of paint on the knife, right? And in this instance, it's, look, it's no paint. Look, guys, it's literally, I barely scraped up the teeniest, tiniest amount of blue. It's like no paint at all. And we're not trying to get it very brightly. I don't want to get it hugely bright. We just want to have a few areas of light and a few areas of dark. And even right there, what do you guys think? I think it's too bright. So I'm going to come back in, try to scrape up some of the paint on the knife, wipe it off. Over here, scrape it up, wipe it off. And if you have to, you just go back in and put a little bit of darkness in there. That's really it. Really it. Right, and then my head, we're coming down here, sliding down the mountain, guys. All the pens, and all we're doing is, is using our, our bright color that we made for our highlights, right? That's all we're doing. We've only really used those, those uh, few colors out there. Look at these angles. Oh, look at these little angles like that, right? That guy doesn't make sense. We'll pull him off the side. And then we're gonna make him soft. So they made him too bright. I love that softness back there. There we go. A couple little things, guys. That's all you need. All you need. Now, I'm so excited for this gallery. I can't wait to go live paint over there. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have an awesome time. People are going to be able to come. You're going to be able to, to I think it, there's an auction for the painting. So lots of stuff happening down at the art gallery. And I'll give you more details and more stuff as it gets closer and closer and closer. But I did want to say I cannot wait. So... Let's do this thing, right? It's about time, if you ask me. I've been waiting and waiting, trying to get as good as I can possibly get so that when this day comes, I would be ready, right? That's the key. A little bit too bright back here for me again. So what, is, what did, uh, I think it was Bob Ross. I can't remember who it was, and I wish I could. They said, art is a play of light and dark, right? So you can't, that's why I always say, you gotta have that little dark disconnect in between all of our lights. You gotta have those darks, right? Now, let's say we had our little bit and just the smallest amount of paint again. I'm just gonna shake it. And then we're gonna start coming over here. Maybe that bit was really in the shadow. Just like that, very cool. And then again, we decide based on what we can see, where we can see it, what our little pathway looks like. All right, and then very softly, very softly, because it wants to grow. It wants to grow on us so bad. 
So soft, even softer back here. Ugh. Oh, so soft. The same angles that we pulled down. And that way we just blur it a little bit as it's coming towards us. And that way over here, we can have super thick texture in the front and make it look really neat. All right, now this guy, we gotta decide what we're gonna do with our waterfall. Little beta tests over here. That's what exactly what I wanted it to do. All right, look like our little bit of mist is coming off the tip top, floating over here, just very lightly sealing in the bottom of these mountains, maybe around the side. What's up, honey? Um, I just wanted to say I'm about to take a shower because I know that sound when my uh, shower starts, it, it freaks me out. Oh, it scared me that one time. Yeah. It did. It was kind of funny. There we go. Gorgeous. So All right, I let's make this. To tell you. Okay, does anybody say the painting is sold? You see that in the comments anywhere? Um, I don't know if it is or if it isn't. Someone oh, said tree. Tree! Melanie yeah. said sold. Where? To who, Melanie? Did somebody claim it? Did Melanie buy it? She's like, oh, me. Look at those little different angles, guys. That guess what? I was hoping it wouldn't sell and I could take it to the gallery with us. What's up? Melanie, Melanie bought it. Melanie bought it! Well, she has that green one that turned out so good, too. And uh, I bet you, if she was actually watching when the blue one that we did the first time was done, that she would have got that one. But I think it got, I think it went to somebody else. All right, let's add a little bit more of our lighter color just to come down here. And again, I want to leave a little bit of separation. That's almost too much. We got to knock all this color off the brush, right? Because what's the first P of paint with Josh, Bailey? Paint. Paint, right? If we have too much paint on the brush, then it's gonna grow too far with our pressure, right? Let's just bring this stuff down like that and just mix it. Every so often you come back up, you bring a little bit more down, mix it again. Come back up, see? It is a loud sound initially. It's like a super loud shower right off the bat. There we go, start mixing it up this way. It's starting to float up just softly, right? Not trying to grab the thick white from up here and bring it out. Trying to very lightly go over here, attaching any amount of white we can and then dragging that out. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And then we can't really tell where it's going. Is it connected into there? Does it go off over here? Leaving our dark areas too. They can't all be the same, right? And down here, especially, you wanna to touch it so softly so you retain those dark areas. You let that cloud flow down like that, right? Everything's just floating off the canvas. Maybe we'll have to do another one on this side to, uh, to complete it and see where all this stuff's going. So softly, oh, just so pretty. I really liked, I really liked the, the eclipse. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. A couple little things over here. Now let's finish off this area. We've got our bit, our pathway. All right, now if we're gonna do that, we'll come over here and we'll just back and forth. Starting to see, maybe we climb up the side of that guy again like we did over here, right? Doesn't always have to be a straight path. Yeah, some areas of your path that can curve just like waves. Shh, right, get off to the side. I got a bit over here. Just helps push that other bit back at the end. If you come in and you cut above where his bottom is back here, just little bits of brightness, right? All you need, a little streak over, seriously, smallest amount of paint, but leaving some of that darkness back in there too. And then you can't tell where the side, because we can't paint, can't take our brush and pull it down right here, right? We can't see the side of this because we're walking on it. So unless we leaned over, oh, almost fell. <laughs> unless we leaned over, we wouldn't be able to see the side. We can only see the top right here, right? Again, it all depends on what you guys are looking at, what you can see, our little spikes. Who's gonna name this painting is the question, guys. What is this name gonna be? Because this is a cool one, if you ask me. Spikes everywhere, little neat things. All right, pulling it off, we got our little bit. Yeah, that side comes down very straight. So start coming up with a name for this painting. What do you want to name it in the comments below? And then maybe Melanie will give you a shout out for naming the painting that she just purchased, right? Very cool. Now, what's if, uh, what say you? What say you if we came up and turned this way? Six of one, half a dozen of the other. So it's like, you either got this or you got that. You know what I mean? It's, they're both awesome is the point. Right? Where are we at here? Well, we gotta have this fade down, fade into the mist. Right? You have to have it go into darkness back in here like that. Right? Let it get very soft. And then you come back where it's darkest and pop in a bit of our little pathway. Right? Just cuts it back. Helps it stick back in there. Come over here. And then this path, maybe it stops right there. We just kind of 
had to go, you can either start here and climb up and around, or you came down from up here and trying to come out of the valley, right? Or wherever this led. I don't know that I'd have, uh, I don't know that I'd have the courage to, to go wherever this was. You guys might have to come with me. Who, who's going to come take a walk with me up our scary alien eclipse cliffside pathway walk thing? Or any, do any of you guys have the, the amount of courage that it would take? Right? I'm going to come back in the comments right now and see. Does anybody have the courage it would take to do this and walk this with me? Arctic portal. Shout out to Tanya Tasty Treats. Tanya Tasty Treats. It's I, that sounds so familiar. Very cool. Tanya Tasty Treats. And Melanie, I probably have to pin the comment again uh, when we get close because I usually forget. I'm always thinking of something else. I'm trying to think of where I've heard Tanya's Tasty Treats before. It sounds so familiar. Like, I've seen, are you in Las Vegas, Tanya's Tasty Treats? There's no way. No way. There's no way she's in Las Vegas. No way. Right? Let's see. Just very lightly. Oh, just so soft. Little things, different angles. Different angles. We came down from this side. Little things though, not trying to cover up the whole smash. Not trying to cover up all that darkness. Just trying to get a little bit of bright to go up at a different angle. All right, so now it looks like there's a little channel over here. And that is what I would call a wicked, wicked, wicked cool painting. Wow. That's neat. I'm so surprised. Like, people are, oh, he acts so surprised. I'm like, I'm not acting. That is literal surprisal. <laughs> I know that's not a word. It's literally, I'm that surprised because I never took a single class. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, I, I never considered myself an artist before. I couldn't draw. I never went, I never watched anyone else's videos uh, besides Bob. You know what I mean? I didn't, um, I've never gone to art school. I didn't even pay attention when I went to school, to regular school for art. Like, you know, when, we, when, the, when the art teacher would teach artists, I remember nothing from that. I have no techniques that I ever picked up in school. It's all about what I tried up here in my, my painting studio and the different houses that we've lived in and stuff, of course. But uh, tried different things and then remembered that for next time and gone, okay, well, that worked. And okay, that didn't work. Don't do that again. You know what I mean? And that's what you got to do. You got to figure out what, what worked. What can you do with the knife, right? Because I can tell you just about everything... I look at, I can go, all right, I'm either doing that with a knife or I'm not, right? Because I know what I can do with this, with this blade. And you have to practice. See what shapes you can make. See what happens when you just smush it. See what happens when you push too hard or when you push not hard enough, right? Practice, practice, practice. That's why P, the third P is practice. It's gotta be. It's gotta P, right? Third P. No, nobody? Okay. A couple little spires growing out here and there. Maybe we got one coming off the side over here, right? And the way that we angle it down and go from bright into dark, that makes it look sharp, right? Makes it look like it's poking out towards us. The angle, the angle, the angle, the angle, right? The angle, the color, the highlights, the shadows. There's so much that needs to happen. Maybe this guy, a little bit down that way, right? He's kind of pointing down at a longer bit. Boom, all jagged, all messed up, right? Maybe on this guy, bang, coming out like that. You can tell if you connect them and make them bright enough where they're coming from versus it growing up here because it didn't touch, right? So they'll look like they're coming off at different angles and different ways if it's bright enough against its dark background color, right? And if it's not, then you gotta go back and either get some more paint, highlight little pieces of it, not the whole thing, of course. Otherwise, they're gonna get longer and longer and longer the more we go, right? Bring them up into our bit of pathway at the same angles that they were at, and then we can just swipe them, continue, change our angle over here, come down from this side very lightly, very lightly. I mean, you could put a whole other rock over here. You could do whatever you wanted. There's so many little things we can do. All right, watch this. These little things. A couple of these I don't like. I'm going to take these guys. This guy over here, we've got to kind of go back and forth a little bit on because he's straight down. But this guy, now the more we move the brush, see how these little bright areas are, are kind of lighting up that little space in between? It doesn't always have to work. When it does work, it's awesome. When it doesn't work, guess what? We figure out a different way to do it. 
right? Maybe this will work if we pull it down. Maybe it might look like this. Maybe it looks like some of that little snow or whatever it is is leaked over the edge. Maybe if we went like that and drug it over the side with a little rounded flick over there, it would do the same thing, right? Littlest things, teeniest, tiniest details, guys. Literally it, literally. And anyone can do it. I put out that video to anybody can do it. You literally can. There's nothing that says you can't. There's no book that says it's got to look a certain way or whatever the case may be, right? You can do it. I can help, right? And we're going to get there. It's going to be fantastic. Awesome. Right there. Okay. <laughs> this one's just, just amazing. Just literally amazes me that that, uh, that eclipse came out so well. That these bright areas stay bright, that the dark areas stay dark, that we use the tiniest amount of little paint that we could get just to make little dark areas or brighter areas, right? Oh, just like that. Oh, yeah. See, I'm trying to see all those circles are different sizes. It was like small circle and I realized it was bright. So then I knew I had to spread it. So I went to a bigger circle and it kind of got a little softer. Then down here, it picked up a little bit more because I pushed in more. All kind of judging about what's happening in the moment on the brush at any given moment about pressure. <laughs> like this, it's all, it's constantly going back and forth, back and forth with the amount that I'm deciding at that time. Do we push in a little bit more or do we come out a little bit more? What's gonna go on, how's it gonna look? And it all is based on how it looks, right? And that's, you're doing everything so minutely and quickly, like gotta keep that dark separator, guys. If we lose it, we're gonna be mad at ourselves, but I don't want it to be that big. You bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, a couple little flicks. A couple of flicks as it's coming down. Maybe, oh, there it goes. Bring a little bit more pressure, right? We'll bring this pressure in. Maybe we can get this guy to connect. What if we had like that and brought a little bit of our white out? Ah, oh, there it is, see? Now you can't really tell what's cloud, what's not. We got our angles all coming in at different ways. Kept our dark areas. It looks just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Man. So cool. We didn't even do anything back here, really. We still have it. How are they going to get to the place, right? This bit back here, we forgot to do. So we're just little, little flat line. That's literally it. Flat scrapes a couple of cut. I mean, it's literally, it's between its top and the very bottom. And the, the highest point and the lowest point is maybe a quarter inch. Not anything big. You want it to be flat. Very lightly pulled to the side. Because again, it's going to get a little bit bigger, right? As you pull it. Now we can see our little trail going off into nowhere. Now we've got to hide this little bit of trail and we don't want to make it as bright, right? Otherwise the, the clouds when the trail will match up. We've got to have our dark separation in there. And then let's do a little bit of detail off the back of these guys. Right? Keep it a little dark separator, throwing it down. Throwing it down, almost through the brush as I said, throwing it down. Pull this guy, and then you decide what you want it to look like. Pressure, 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 pressure. Eating it up to that little dark separator, right? The dark separator gets brighter and brighter and brighter, and that's okay as long as you leave it dark in between the two colors. You can do whatever you want to do. It's the third time I've accidentally touched the painting with my finger and then looked and gone, that's yeah, okay. <laughs> We're using such a small amount of paint on a, on a black canvas that even a finger touch, you're not even going to notice. Very cool. Softening it down in little areas that I want to be soft, some areas I want it to show very brightly. A lot of texture, some areas are very soft, very neat. Different colors in all the water. It's brighter up here, it gets a little bit darker. Then we get this a little bit foggier, a little bit less, more mist at the bottom, more clouds, so cool. Just so neat. And actually what I wanna do, a little bit of the brightness and then maybe back here, there's just a little cloud trying to sneak in. A little bit, a little bit of paint. Oh, that might be too much, very small amount. Shh. Keeping our pathway, right? And then over onto the side. Let me get dark. I love finishing the sides just in certain areas where there would be a little bit of mist, right? We could do with this guy, and sort of match up our, our little angles just by flipping them off the edge, just like this, a little bit. Right, that guy, maybe he came up over here, a little bit brighter on this side. It was kind of going up at an angle. So that way when the buyer is looking at the, you know, walking down their own hallway, they're gonna see that it's this 3D scene. It wraps around. The edge of the canvas. There we go. You guys can see that on TikTok? That's so cool. That's so stinking cool. Man, why the, Melanie got the best thinking one, you know, one of the best ones, one of my favorite ones. 
And it seems like the, 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 the hardcore fans know, somehow they know when I'm gonna paint a good one because it sells during the show. And then I don't even get a chance to enjoy it. It's gone, it's just gone already. I was gonna take this one to the gallery, Melanie, but it's okay, you can have it. You can have it. I'm just messing, guys. There we go, just softening that paint and then I'm getting out of your way again, I swear. Swearsies. There we go. So cute. That's such a cool idea and it was so easy. So easy to do. Okay, what was the title again, Melanie? Hit me with the title because I already forgot. And now we're ready to sign it and get done with this tutorial. We're going to sign it and then we're going to flip it around and name it. Arctic Portal, I like that. Very cool name. Very cool name, very bad brush. Haha! -ha. Let's get this brush. I don't know why I tried to get a different. I grabbed like an older brush that I don't use. Here we go. Right in there. Bang, then we'll turn it around, and sign it, and put the bird family in. Right through. Oh, dude, look at him flying through here, too. Normally I put them up. Yeah, let's have them flying through here. Where's my. Ye old mall stick over here. Just like that. They're gonna be like coming down. Little, little small little guys. We're like, dude, gotta get out of here. What are we doing? Bailey gets mad if her bird's not bright enough. So there's the bird family. There's the signature. We're about to name it. And then we're about to be done, guys. So before everybody just streams out of the stream and scrolls away, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out and doing all the fun stuff and being here with me and purchasing paintings and buying shirts and hats and supporting my store and this, that, and the other. I just really appreciate you guys. And it's so close. Like at the end of this month, right? June, in the, the beginning of June, Josh is a full-time artist. Like there's nothing else about it, right? So it's, it's coming so close. It's so close, guys. So close. So close. Well, what do you do for a living? I'm an artist. That it gives me like anxiety. It gives me anxiety to say that because I never considered myself an artist before. Never. I'm just a dude who paints. There we go. And I, I'm pretty good at teaching you how, how a simpleton like me paints. So I teach in a simple way. Let's see. This one's number 758, I think. I got them out there. Oh, dang it. Now I have to look. I'm pretty sure it's 758, but I gotta look. I was right. Of course you were right, Josh. How could you be wrong? 758, guys. All right. So, right down here. 758. And we named it Arctic Portal. Which I really love, and it's very cool. So remember, start coming up with the, in the comments. Green... Purple, green, purple. I might come back and do one more tonight. Green or purple, let's see. Remember guys, my manager DC says, stop writing all your dang links in the thing and just write paintwithjosh.com and then people can go there and then find all the other sites. So what do you guys think? Do you, do you agree with him? Or do you like that I write out all my pages? We're gonna let the fans decide, DC. You guys on my side or you on his side? Let's find out now. And then we're gonna find out if we want a green or not. And I gotta, I gotta finish the tutorial real fast. So. Oh, dang, I gotta turn this around. Do this. This is more editing. The longer the other camera is running, the longer time I need to edit. And I'm already so far behind on editing that it's not even funny. So, here we go. Well, guys, this one turned out fantastic. I can't wait for you to send it in. Send your pictures to facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And ba-ba, get up out of here. End the video. Thank you, Josh. All right.